The Caribbean Sea Archipelago stretches from Trinidad and Tobago in the south to Cuba in the north. Comprising the Greater and Lesser Antilles, the region is famous for the sun, sea and sand, which in the first six months of 2013 attracted over 15.6 million visitors. While the tourism industry's figures are described by the Caribbean Tourism Organization as steady, when compared to last year, the economies of the countries visited paint a contrasting figure. A common international measure for a country's economic health is called the debt-to-GDP ratio. That is the ratio between the national debt and its gross domestic product, which is generally expressed as a percentage of the GDP. A stable economy generally has a debt-to-GDP ratio below 50%. 14 Caribbean countries are among the top 30 debtors in the world and the challenge being faced by many is how to avoid going over the fiscal cliff. The topic was explored at a two-day international financial and accounting forum hosted by the Institute of Chartered Accountants. A ministerial panel with representation from Jamaica, Barbados, Grenada and Trinidad and Tobago discussed the challenges faced in their various countries and their policies to prevent economic collapse. Chairman Wendell Motley gave a brief overview of the situation. As you know, most Caribbean governments have uh, been very, very heavy on the fiscal accelerator over the last decade. And this has resulted in very high debt-to-GDP ratios. Um, at the high end, Jamaica with 142.8, uh, Barbados with 72.3, uh, Grenada with 116.1 1 ratio, and Trinidad at the low end uh, with 36.4. Barbados's representative on the panel, the parliamentary secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Senator Jepta Ince, says his country weathered financial crisis in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So Barbados, we depend on tourism, external environment. We depend on international business, external environment. We depend on capital inflows, external environment. We depend on remittances external environment and the critical variable that also located in the external environment is that critical variable of energy. The situation in Jamaica is acute. Minister of Justice Senator Mark Golding said by the time the current government entered office in 2012, the terms of an earlier IMF agreement had been reneged on and as a result, the multilateral flows of capital dried up. And in order to get to that, we had to execute um, some quite difficult prior actions to show not only our determination to do what's necessary, but our capacity to execute. And the two things are not the same, of course. So we had to um, enter into a wage restraint arrangement with the public sector workers, not only for the past two years, but the coming three years, to um, basically eliminate any further wage increases during that period. We had to do a debt swap for the second time with domestic holders of government bonds um, to reduce ten the coupons and extend maturity dates. Um, to achieve significant GDP um, savings relative to GDP over a seven-year period. And we had to introduce a, a series of tax measures to reduce the fiscal deficit for that, that year and going forward. Grenada's economy took a severe blow from hurricanes Ivan and Emily in 2004 and 2005, respectively. Policy trade advisor in the Ministry of Finance, Dr. Patrick Antoine, said two and a half years of GDP was lost along with about 90% of the housing stock. Is we have a situation where our debt burden uh, is in fact large and increasingly unsustainable. Large and unsustainable. Um, the first thing that we've had to face up to is that our debt grew from 91.7% to 109. 
What, it, what this means is that our debt service ratio to current revenue is about 40.4%. What this means is that the country has absolutely no means to pay creditors. And Grenada had to, as you know, undertake what is called a selective default. Based on the debt to GDP ratio, Trinidad and Tobago's economy is stable. Minister of Trade, Industry and Investment, the Honorable Vasant Barath, said over the last 12 months there have been four quarters of continuous growth. When the figures are released for 2013, the GDP is expected to have grown by 1.6%, with projections for 2014 at 2.5%. The country is focused on maintaining stability and continued growth, but has to treat with the budget deficit. We came into office in 2010 with uh, a budget deficit for the first time um, in the history, or for a very long time. We came into office at a time when uh, this country suffered negative growth of 4% for the first time in 17 years since 1993, with a projected um, deficit for several years to come. We've attempted over the years, over the last three uh, years uh, till this budget, to reduce that deficit. In fact, the deficit that was declared by the minister for the new fiscal year um, is the lowest in the last uh, three years. And the intention really is to increase the revenue base and reduce our expenditure such that over the next three years till 2016, we would have uh, placed the economy on a sustainable path and would have reduced our budget deficit to less than 1% of our GDP. The way forward for each country is unique, but all share the sentiment that hard work, sacrifice and diligence is necessary to avoid the fiscal cliff. One of the things that we did is that we removed the subsidies of energy and asked Barbadians to adjust to price movements in the energy sector. Because creating that subsidy created a debt of almost 80 million US dollars to the Barbados National Oil Company. And it was not sustainable. An economy like Barbados cannot get into subsidies where there is no alternative sector to cushion against any shortfalls in revenue. The government of Jamaica is committed to turning the tide on the growth of our public debt that has eliminated any fiscal space to do the sort of things that some of the other governments in the Caribbean are able to do. When I hear nearly 50% of your revenues are in the form of discretionary transfers or entitlements to um, to your population, that is um, something we can only dream of. And one thing I would say to you that is, you know, it's worthwhile ensuring that you use the resources you have wisely while you have them, because you may not always have them, and you need to make sure that when that day comes, you're in a position to deal with it. So long-term planning is essential and difficult for politicians, but can't be avoided. Minister Barath acknowledged the wisdom of Senator Golding's warning on becoming complacent about resources and made an appeal to residents of Trinidad and Tobago regarding our oil and gas reserves. Let us shake ourselves out of this slumber because we may think that we have an inexhaustible supply of oil and gas and an energy and that God is a trini. But at the end of the day, we must know that on our doorsteps that our competitors are working actively in the areas of shale gas. The United States is likely to be self-sufficient in shale gas in three years. They're no longer gonna require our energy. There have been vast finds of natural gas in East Africa that will compete directly against Trinidad and Tobago in the markets that we would want to go to when we lose the US market, the Japanese market, the Asian markets, European markets. What then? <laughs>